so you can slay in the kitchen. This is how I chop an onion. Real simple. Peel off that outer layer and then just like so. For a stir fry kind of thing, don't have to be very particular, but you can see how fast that was, that half an onion. Actually, I'm going kind of slow because I'm talking. And if you're battling with onions in the kitchen, it's very likely it's just that your knife isn't sharp enough. So you can buy a really inexpensive knife sharpener and that way, I don't think this knife was more than $40 at like TJ Maxx or Home Goods, but it's a really nice knife and I just sharpen it every month or so. It's a Calphalon, I think, yeah. If you want your onions to break down and get soft but not use a ton of olive oil, you can keep adding water to it and they'll absorb the water and keep breaking down and get really soft. And I've got a couple of pepper cutting tricks for you. There's a couple different ways you can do this. One of my favorite, even though it might not result in the most perfectly even shaped pepper, but it's so easy, is you just kind of cut from the top around the side, avoiding those middle veins and middle seeds. And usually in about four, four cuts, you can get the whole thing seed free. And then actually when it opens like this, sometimes what I'll do is just take that top, those top seeds, and that has made life so much easier because I love bell pepper and I cook with them a lot. So that's one way to do it. Then you can cut them into strips and chop them up. The other way, and I think this pepper got moldy, uh, but let's see, is you can cut off the top and the bottom, the bumpy parts. Don't worry, you'll be using that still. Although I won't because it's the top is moldy there. Uh, and then you can take out the middle seeds and kind of cut it along the side and then you've got this strip like this. And this is a great way to do it if you need to be really meticulous for any reason about the size pieces because you can cut it either this way or this way. But basically then you have much more even strips that you can then chop down into little pieces. So take your pick. Now I've got those peppers and onions cooking and I'm gonna clean off my mushrooms because those take the next longest to cook. Here's what I do, I just take one of my old dish towels and get it sort of not soaking wet, a little bit moist. I know we all love that word, moist. And then just take them and kind of rub off the top. I just wipe off most of the dirt and take out the little stem there. For this stir fry, I think I'm just gonna do slices Sometimes I'll buy a portabella, cause like the big mushrooms, because they're so much easier to clean and then cut, like you just have to do it once. Whereas these little guys take a little bit longer, but because I'm already in the kitchen with other things going on, I, it's nice cause I'm just rocking and rolling, moving along. I really don't enjoy prepping garlic and ginger, but if I can use it for a ton of stuff or just go ahead and do, do it all at once and pop the extra in the fridge, for later on in the week, it just makes it so much easier. Only have to do it once, one and done. And like I said, I'm already in the kitchen, so I don't wanna sit here and twiddle my thumbs. You probably already know the garlic trick, but basically you take the clove, bang it on the side of your knife, and bam, it pops right out nice and easily. Sometimes what I'll do too, if I'm doing a ton of garlic, is I'll get all the cloves out and then throw them in my mini Cuisinart and chop them that way to save a step.